Hey guys, welcome back to Kelly's Creations. I'm Kelly. I'm so glad you're here. We are going to be doing a collab today, an open collab, sponsored by our host, Mary Beth from MB Gray Designs. I will link her channel down below along with the playlist. So the collab is all about spring flowers. So we're going to do projects involving flowers today. So I had this clipboard from Dollar Tree and I got these cool peel and stick tiles from Dollar General, which are all only a dollar a sheet. And I thought it would be cool to make a really fancy like fl floral display. So I'm just measuring right now because I need to cut like a notch out of the top of the tile to have the where the clipboard clips <laughs> to cut that out and have that there because I am going to utilize every part of this clipboard. So I've always seen people do DIYs with these tiles and never could find them. They don't carry them at my Dollar Tree, but they do carry them at my Dollar General. So I was super excited when I seen them and grabbed a few sheets of them. Now, I didn't ever use these before, so I wasn't aware that the sticky is pretty sticky, but it's not adhered to the tile itself. So there's like an air bubble gap especially if you cut it. <laughs> so I peeled it off and stuck it down to my clipboard, but it was bouncy and you could just feel it right there. You could feel how bouncy it was. So I ripped it back up and decided to just peel the sticky off of it, which came off really easy. It's just a sheet of sticky and <laughs> it peels off the back and then you're left just with the plastic tile, which is much easier to craft with. So now I am going to actually use hot glue because I wasn't thinking, I was having a Kelly moment. Hot glue and plastic probably wasn't the best idea with me not being careful while I'm pushing. Now, <laughs> I'm going to show you because plastic melts. <laughs> but if you, you can use hot glue on this because I did for all of these projects. You just have to be careful. You can't, you know, push it down because see, I smashed one of my flowers. But it wasn't smashed enough to start over. Um, I wasn't gonna waste my dollar sheet of tile. So I just decided to be a lot more gentle. I put the hot glue down and I'm a lot more gentle. I'm just kind of waving my hands over the top of it, not pushing down, not applying any pressure except for just a little bit as I'm moving my hands around it. So it is possible, just be careful. So now you see me just cutting the excess away from the clipboard, which should be easy, but when you get to the middle part, it gets a little difficult. <laughs> okay, so we're ready to paint. I'm using Waverly and Plaster. That's one of my favorite kind of creamier whites. I absolutely just love the plaster. I'm using a foam brush from Dollar Tree. Now you're going to want to like wiggle. It's not like a a standard back and forth painting motion, you kind of want to really get into those grooves. So put a nice coat on, dry it. Put another coat on, dry it. Then I came in with my foam brush and kind of patted it. And that gives it a really cool kind of like stucco look. It makes the paint kind of bubbly on top. I just like that effect. If you don't, put your third coat on the way you did the other two. Either way, you get a really, really nice looking white tile. And I used my heat gun and dried it again. It dries really quick. Now, when you're cutting, I had a few like little stragglies, so I just grabbed my little scissors and trimmed those off so that it was one nice smooth surface. Now, I bought these beautiful napkins and I can't remember where I got them. <laughs> I think it was Walmart. And then that's just a piece of the plank wood from Dollar Tree. You get like six pieces in a package. And I thought it would be neat to do the fire trick again with the Mod Podge and the napkins. These colors are beautiful. Oh my gosh, so vibrant. And they stay within the flower theme of the collaboration that we're doing. So I thought 
okay. It's actually the perfect size for that plank too because it's a rectangle pattern on the napkin. And I thought they were two ply, but I couldn't get it separated. So it might not be two ply. So I'm gonna do the same thing I did in my little um, tips and tricks video. I'm gonna put Mod Podge on the wood and then I'm gonna put the napkin down and I'm just gonna take my lighter and I'm gonna light the sides of the napkin, which is so much fun. I just love doing this. <laughs> so just put a nice coat of Mod Podge down, make sure that it's totally covered. Learn from my mistakes. <laughs> you want it totally covered. You don't want any areas that don't have Mod Podge. Then you just put your napkin down and smooth it out and get as many of those little wrinklies out as you possibly can. Put it on something with height. So I'm using this cup and just light the corner and the fire does the work for you. I've never done this on wood before. Um, so this was neat to see how it would, you know, burn and all, I don't know. I've done a, quite a few different kinds of napkins now and they burn differently. Like this one had a lot of ashes, um, but it had such a cool burnt effect going around. So that gave me the idea to get my distress ink out and really highlight it some more and really bring out more of that kind of rusted, burnt look around the edges. So that's what I'm doing right now with the Distress Ink. If you don't have that, you can use any kind of brown paint. That'll work too. So I'm going to come back to my board, which I'm absolutely loving. I grabbed Waverly and Sorry. You're going to see me use a lot of the plaster, Sorry, and the moss in this because I just think that those green spring, uh, scream spring to me. And one of my good friends, Cindy, did this in one of her videos where she took like a craft stick or a popsicle stick and kind of ran it through the paint and just skimmed over the tiles. Um, they're raised, so you can just skim right over. What I did learn is you don't want a lot of paint on your stick. Otherwise, it starts getting kind of gloppy and you lose like the design. Um, I did make that mistake. So yeah, just kind of dip your painter stick or popsicle stick in the paint, pat it on something, and just keep going over until you have as much of that color show as you desire. So I set that aside to dry and I went into my floral stash and I just grabbed some really pretty white and pink flowers. And then I grabbed this little pick with berries on it which wasn't the easiest <laughs> to get cut off, but I just had to use my muscles and I got it done. I'm just using this kind of as a background and then I'm gonna layer my flowers on top of it. I think that's a really cool look with the sticks in the back. And these flowers are so pretty. My aunt actually sent me like a Christmas tree tote. That's how big that tote was. Just full of flowers that she wasn't going to use anymore. So I have like a wide range of floral, which is amazing. And these flowers were in there. So I don't know where she got them from, but you can just pick out, you can go to Dollar Tree or Dollar General, Family Dollar, Michael's, Hobby Lobby. Um, they all sell beautiful flowers and you can just pick out flowers that you love and that you want to decorate your house with. But I thought these were really pretty. So I bundled them all together and then I used some twine and I just kind of attached the bundle with the twine, just tying it into a knot for right now. So once I had my flowers ready, now it's time to attach them to the board. And I'm using the twine that I tied around to make the bundle and I'm using the top part of the clipboard, the clip. So I'm just kind of feeding it underneath and then coming around. I think I looped it around once and tied it in a knot. And that's the perfect little area to hang the floral arrangement from.
So now that we got the flowers hanging, I'm grabbing my piece of wood that I put that beautiful napkin on, and I'm gonna hot glue it down to the clip of the clipboard. Um, I hot glued it on, then I flipped it around, and I kind of reinforced it from the back side using just a little bit more hot glue. I never knew this before, and I don't know if all clipboards have it, but Dollar Tree clipboards it actually has a little hanger that you can pull out in the back, which is perfect for hanging this on the wall. And there's the finished design. I just love this. I think it's so colorful. It screams spring, and everything about it, I just am absolutely in love with. And I can't wait to hang it up on my wall. And actually, all of these DIYs, I'm gonna be showing you at the end, so stay tuned to the end because I'm gonna group them all together for a beautiful wall display. So for DIY number two, we are going to use this wooden like wreath from Family Dollar. It was only a dollar and it's super cute. And we're using a mirror from Dollar Tree and again, another one of those tile sheets. So I've had this mirror in my stash forever and never knew what I was going to do with it. And then it came to me when I bought that tile sheet. <laughs> So we're taking it apart, just kind of pulling the mirror off that cardboard and using it as my template to cut my tile. Now I learned the hard way, always cut on the outside of the line. It's better to have it bigger than too small. I cut right on the line and it was just a little bit too small, tiny bit too small, which I have to fix, but it ends up working out. Um, but my advice to you is trim it bigger you can always trim it down <laughs> so i'm going to be using the back side of the mirror because i thought that the glue would stick to that better and just work better than the shiny surface so i'm just going to use a little bit of hot glue on the mirror i'm going to glue that back down to the cardboard then i'm going to put a little bit of hot glue on the back of it and i'm going to attach my tile again being very careful not to press down too hard so i don't melt any of the design that's on the tile now i'm just going to assemble it back together exactly the way it was and since i have like a little bit more on top of it you just got to kind of put it you know line it up and then kind of lift up so you can see where the tabs are and then push that cardboard under those tabs and it goes right back in here's where i realized i cut it too small <laughs> so this time we're going to use moss and I'm going to paint the whole thing, the tile, the mirror frame, everything. Then I realized <laughs> it just, even with the, I was hoping maybe the paint would cover up my mistake of it being cut too small, but it wasn't. So you're going to see me grab some of my nautical rope and go around the edges to cover up where the tile is too short, right there. Um, I did not want the nautical rope to be brown on this um that wasn't the look i was going for so i just used some hot glue i put my nautical rope down and then i proceed to paint the nautical rope as well so that it all blends in and it's all the beautiful color of that moss green Once I had a great coat of that moss green, I came in with some Waverly chalk paint in plaster. And I used the craft stick trick again, and I was putting just too much paint. <laughs> I guess I was kind of like getting in a hurry, and I don't know why, but 
If you dip the stick in the paint and then get the excess off by patting it on something, it works a lot better. As you can see, there's a lot of paint on that stick, so it didn't give the same effect as the first one. And as I'm just kind of highlighting the outer edge with that plaster paint, I decide I'm just going to start dabbing the inside and kind of just making it where... You see the plaster and a little bit of the green, but you don't have the same effect as the first project I did. And that's fine because I want these to be unique and different. So now it's time to attach that wooden wreath. I grabbed some of those little wooden squares you get from Dollar Tree to give this some lift. And I'm just going to glue those wooden squares down. And then I'm going to attach the wooden wreath to these squares. Now, in hindsight, I wish I would have used four squares and did it like 12, 3, 6, and 9. Um, I only did two, so it's a little wobbly. I don't know what I was thinking, <laughs> but it does work, and it gives it some height and some lift off of the sign. And then I just come back in with that plaster, and I go over that wooden wreath. I'm not going to do anything else. Here's where different styles come into play, because if you want to, you could color in the leaves on that wreath. You could put colors, whatever you want. So to finish this piece off, I went in my stash and grabbed some of my favorite florals. And I'm just cutting them down, and I'm going to put them together and make like a swag for the bottom of this. So I'm just getting the right with and then I just start layering, layering, layering. I hold them together by wrapping some twine around the middle and tying it off once I have enough flowers in the thickness that I want for this piece. Once I have that all tied off and secured, I can attach it to the sign. Now I can go right under the wooden wreath and put both of my pieces of twine underneath there, bring them back up, and then tie the um, swag right onto that wooden wreath right at the bottom. Then I just finish it off with a twine bow. This is such a cute, unique, and different sign. And when you see it at the end, when I put them all together, oh my gosh, you have the most beautiful floral wall display. So stinking cute. For my next project, I had a bunch of these eucalyptus stems, and I had this relax sign from Dollar Tree. So my idea was to take the eucalyptus, cut it down, and kind of bend and maneuver it to go around the relax sign. So I just trimmed off pieces and started hot gluing them down to my sign. I was hoping that you would still be able to it would still be legible, that you would still be able to read it because it was eucalyptus stems. It did get a little bulky and it turned out cute in the end. I'm not sure if you can actually read, relax, <laughs> but it did turn out super cute and it does accent the other pieces really well. Um, I maybe should have used something 
a little skinnier than eucalyptus to do this. So I'm definitely gonna try this project again, but maybe use a different kind of floral to do it. So you're gonna see me put the eucalyptus down and then I'm gonna come in with some flowers and highlight the edges. After I was done adding all of the little blue flowers to the edges, then I turned it the other way. And as you can see, I know what it says, you know what it says. I just don't know if anybody else, you know, that didn't see what we used to begin with would know it says relax, but you can come in and you can rip off some eucalyptus leaves and you can fill in any gaps you have where you can see the metal sign. And that's it. Like you could use pretty much any flower um, on one of these signs. I just wanted like a floral word. I don't know if I achieved it because like I said, if anybody came in and didn't know what the original sign said, I don't know if they would get relaxed out of it, but it still turned out really, really cute. My last project is going to be using this thrifted Christmas picture frame I got from Goodwill. One of these love um, boxes from Dollar Tree and again using the tiles. Now originally I tried to get the love off of this. I'm really glad it didn't come off because it really adds to the piece at the end. So I did break it by trying to get it off. So once I realized I couldn't, I just used some hot glue and I attached that back on. Um, these boxes were available during Valentine's. Um, they might have them for Easter. I'm not sure. Now you see me getting the back off of this. I'm glad it separated because that made my life a lot easier. And I'm just going to use that backing to measure my tiles. And again, cut bigger because it's a lot easier to trim than if you mess up like I did in the green project <laughs> and you're too short. I was making sure I was not going to come out too short this time. Now I'm just using hot glue again, being very careful not to melt my tile because <laughs> I do rip the back off of this one too. And then I assemble it back into the frame. It does pop out just a little bit because the tile, obviously you're adding a thickness to it. So I just added a little hot glue and then I came in and added a little hot glue around the edges and just put some painter's tape covering the hot glue to secure the frame in. I love doing this trick and it really holds perfectly and I haven't had a project break yet. So now we're gonna come in with some celery. I love this color, it's so pretty. And first I am going to use my plaster again and I'm gonna paint the tiles white and then the celery is because it matches the frame almost perfectly. So I'm gonna come in and highlight with the salary. So I take the love box and I paint that with the plaster as well so that it will match the tile inside my sign. And then I'm kind of brainstorming of where I wanna put it on the sign and I absolutely love that placement. So that's where it's gonna go. So then I come in with a sponge brush and that celery and kinda of do like painting distressing around the edges with the celery. I absolutely love the moss. I love the celery color and I think that just screams spring to me with those different shades of green so beautiful i just absolutely love that and then against that plaster color oh so i do the same thing to the box i just stress that in paint with that celery color as well oh my goodness so beautiful <laughs> Thank you. 
for the tile, yes, I'm using the celery again. And just that same sponge. Actually, what it is is the tip of that sponge brush. I just cut it off so that I could get in a little bit easier than having a handles. I just cut the top off and use my finger. And a good tip is if you use those sponge brushes, they have amazing wooden handles. So when you're done, to take the handle off and keep it for future projects and throw the top part, the sponge away. Oh my gosh, I have so many wooden handles and why not? Why not utilize what you have? So I take this salary and I highlight the love on that box as well. I attach the twine handle back onto the box because I'm going to be using that to mimic it hanging from the side. And I just use a little bit of hot glue and some painter's tape again to secure the twine handle where I want it. Um, now I have a nice flat twine handle. So now I'm going to put the box down. What I like about this is that you can see the sign on the corners. I love the placement and I tried different placements on this side. And this one, I just loved that look, that you could still see the original shape of the picture frame and the box kind of came out from the center. So once I had it lined up, I used hot glue to attach this and I also used hot glue to attach the twine hanger to the top right here. You're not going to see it because we're going to put a little burlap bow, or not burlap, but twine bow to hide the hot glue so you're not going to see where it's attached. Then I just grabbed some florals and came in and filled this baby with some beautiful flowers after I attached my little twine bow. Yellow and white and green go so beautiful together. So for this one, I grabbed my yellow flowers and my white ones, and I grabbed thicker, I, are these hydrangeas? I'm not sure. Like I said, my aunt gave me a whole bunch of flowers and none of them have the stickers on them still, so, and I'm not a flower expert. <laughs> I, I really don't know my flowers, but I know they're beautiful. And I knew it would fill this up. I wanted a really full look. Now for height, I I took my white flowers and I put them behind the yellow ones just to bring it up higher and give that height. Having the box sit on the frame like this, it really, you can put some really tall flowers in it because it's pretty deep. And I just kept filling and filling until I had that desired look. And oh my gosh, this, I don't know, the first one was my favorite, but this one is so beautiful. This one might just be my favorite. So beautiful, oh my gosh, and it screams spring. This was such a fun collab, I'm so excited. I love Mary Best channel. I'm so grateful that she invited me and told me about her open collab with these wonderful ladies. Here is the display. Oh my gosh, look how pretty these all look together. Such a beautiful springtime wall display. So now go check out everybody else's video. The playlist will be linked below in the description description box along with our beautiful host Mary Beth from MB Gray Design. So take some time today, grab some coffee and go check out what these beautiful ladies did with their spring floral videos. I love y'all. I hope you have a blessed and wonderful week and if you haven't already hit that subscribe button. It's totally free guys.